On any given day, I realize that I'm going back and forth between at least five different data sources to check up with my analytics and see how my small business is doing. And the crazy thing is that I read or heard somewhere that on average, businesses check up with 12 different data sources for reporting. Can you imagine the time spent as you click back and forth between those different sources to see your analytics, make sense of it, and then also the time spent to combine that data in a unified view in a dashboard to make sense of it and to do reporting. So in this video, we'll talk about a solution, a tool that lets you view all your business data in one single place and solves a lot of problems for marketers such as tracking key business metrics in one single place, making analytics easier to understand and draw insights from, and finally, making reporting significantly easy and saves a lot of time. The tool I'll be talking about today is called Databox, and no, this video isn't sponsored by them, but they were kind enough to set me up with a trial of their paid version so I can show you all the features of the platform as well as also experimenting myself and the thing is I've actually been a fan of Databox for a while now I love the platform I love their content that they create on Twitter and the blog it's super useful and I've referred to it so many times on this channel before as well as in the marketing analytics class that I teach anyway here's some of the things that you can expect to learn from this video number one the benefits of using Databox or any other business analytics platform similar to data box for your business analytics. Number two, a review of the platform will take a look at the features, how you can create dashboards, how you can use metrics, how you can unify your data in one single place. And we'll do this via screen share. And finally, my thoughts on the platform and some use cases. But hey, if we're just meeting, my name is Elif and I'm a marketing strategist, educator and content creator. And I make weekly videos for this channel around the topics of marketing and marketing career. So if those are interesting to you and if you're new to the channel, you might consider subscribing and we will be happy to have you in the community. Anyway, without further ado, let's get into it. There's one more thing I want to share before we skip to the screen sharing and that is how I came up with the idea to create a video about Databox. As you know, I started a new series on the channel that's called Tech and Tools for Marketers and I'm going to be covering more reviews like this one and more ideas on which tools and technology you can use for different purposes. But that's not how I got the idea for Databox specifically. So as as some of you already know, I teach marketing analytics at George Brown College here in Toronto. And some of the topics that we cover during the semester include data analytics, obviously language of metrics, data visualization, data reporting, data storytelling, the challenge of using multiple data sources and more. And every time I teach this course, one of the most common questions that I get is, isn't there a solution to switching back and forth between data sources? And this is a great question that sparked the idea of sharing this platform with them and showing how this can be done. And while I'm doing that, I also wanted to share this with you as well. So if you've ever done marketing reporting, whether in an in-house role or in a marketing agency, you know that to create meaningful reports, you need to go through several steps every single time such as extracting data from the different sources of data you have, uh, plugging them into a spreadsheet, uh, structuring your data with VLOOKUPs, formatting, calculations, and more to make sense of it, and creating a PowerPoint deck to pull the most meaningful insights and metrics to report to your manager, C-level, or the clients that you work with. And also you have to repeat this every month or sometimes week in some cases. All right, so we are now looking at my data box, uh, I guess, home page and I want to take you through the different steps that I've taken already in setting up my data boards and my experience with the tool so far. So the first thing when you start off with data box is that you need to connect your data sources. And when I'm talking about data sources, if this is something new to you, what I mean is that um, each individual platform that collects data for your business, whether that is your CRM, your email marketing tool, your social media accounts, your Google Analytics, your YouTube studio, whatever you can think of, is a data source. And I already have a couple of data sources connected for my data box uh, data boards, but I wanna show you some of the other available integrations. And there's so many that you can integrate with, so I'm just gonna scroll down to show you some of the options. There's so many options in the e-commerce space, in the payment space, uh, in terms of marketing automation, obviously CRM, 
um, and so much more all the social media platforms all the video creation platforms and all that so there's there's so many anyway even if your integration doesn't exist you can also let uh, Databox know about it and they might consider making a new deal with them so these are the ones that I've connected for my business that I wanted to take a look at for the purpose of this video and I've already set up my metrics and some of the data boards because I've been using the platform for a little over a few days now so the next step after connecting your data sources is selecting your metrics obviously because uh, for each data source that you connect there could be so many metrics but you might not be interested in having all of those metrics in your metric library for data box so you kind of do a favorites list of all the metrics that you can choose from your individual data sources and these are some of the ones that i've chosen uh, just to play around with just to see and how i've done that is i went to the metric library and this is a feature that i really liked actually it shows you some of the most popular basic metrics so if you don't don't want to think about the metrics from scratch if you know like if you're looking at a blank page sometimes it's not that easy to get ideas about the favorite metrics so it gets you started off with some of the most popular ones and then also some most popular custom metrics that were built with the query builder which are also greatly useful so I could take advantage of these ones too and there are also some popular calculated metrics as well that is another great option to include in your metric library so these are all the things that you can do you kind of do a favorites list out of all the metrics available from your data sources and then once you've selected your metrics then now it's time to build your data boards which i think is used synonymously for dashboards so if i say dashboard within the video just uh, understand data boards in the data box context so i currently have six data boards that i created and i don't believe i created any one of them from scratch what i really liked was to use the public templates option and these public templates are created by either the data box team or the partner agencies or other users of the platform that have made the templates public so if you don't want to start from scratch which i did not want to do i selected a couple that i thought were looking good and then i started playing around with the original template that was created so uh, let's now move to my data boards and let's maybe take a look at google analytics acquisition snapshot one and i'll show you one more after this one and we'll take a look at how it looks but also then how you can customize it how you can visualize it to make it look better to have your branding on it and also how you can pull different metrics and play around with how you want to see the data so right now again we're looking at the google analytics acquisition snapshot and currently i actually like how it looks already but if i wanted to uh, pull in different metrics from my metric library of google analytics i can just drag and drop it so how about i do uh, top source medium by sessions and I drag it right here right now obviously it's gonna be too tiny but I just want to show you how you can change the look and how easy it is to kind of okay let's maybe delete this one so I'll show you how it's deleted how you can change the sizing I can change the size of this one as well if I wanted to as well as playing around with different visualization types. So right now, this one is a number. Uh, this one is a line chart. How about I change this to a bar chart? Okay, so right now it's obviously too tiny. Let me drag it to cover that whole four block section. And now it's time to select my data source. As you see, once you click in the metric box, I'm gonna call it, uh, you can then select your data source. So it, this is the great thing, it doesn't have to be from the same data source for one dashboard. So you can mix different metrics from different data sources in one dashboard, which is a great way to look at your uh, business performance if there are only several metrics that you're really really concerned about every single month and maybe you are measuring yourself or measuring your performance uh, by looking at some of those goals and some of those metrics so in that case you can pull different metrics into one dashboard and see everything in one snapshot so for me that could be my youtube subscribers my 
uh, new subscribers in my newsletter and let's say uh, my bounce rate, my sessions by source and my organic traffic. I'm just making up right now. But if those were the goals that I was kind of measuring my performance upon, then I would be able to insert all of those metrics into one single dashboard. So anyway, I'm talking a lot. Let's pull a new metric and see it in a bar chart view. So this one is showing direct traffic. How about I do organic traffic, organic sessions? Okay, let's, let's do organic sessions and let's do last month and it is showing by day okay perfect and i can also change the title of the blog if i don't want to use these classic keywords but use something original creative i can also do that i can change the blog title so as of this change now i see uh, my organic sessions in a bar chart and this one is in a line graph so I can play around with different visual settings for my different charts and the other thing I want to show you is other advanced visual settings where it comes to changing colors let's do neon red for example and then um, these ones are also great in the sense that you can really customize it for the brand that you are reporting for so say that you're working in a marketing agency and you want to customize it with with the, your client's logo and a background image that fits into their context, then you can do all of that here and then save it. Okay, I'm just gonna say discard. And then when it comes to sharing, these are your sharing options. So you can share it with a, uh, with a shareable URL. You can, let's see, you can embed it. Uh, you can give a user access and you can also play around with some additional settings, limit to certain IP addresses and all of that. So these features also make it very easy to share with your clients or whomever you wanna share it with within the internal team or your C-level, whoever it is that you're reporting to. So let's go back and see maybe one more uh, data board that I want to show you. Let's let, take a look at my YouTube channel performance. Uh, this is actually a data board that I really liked. I pulled from the public templates and I believe I only played around with maybe one of the metrics and change it with something that was more relevant for me. But so far, I really like it actually. I really like to see subscribers gained versus lost and watch time by video and the traffic sources and all of that. So uh, I really like seeing it in one snapshot and it is not necessarily how you see it when you look at individual data sources. Finally, let's talk about the use cases and why I like creating these data boards and why I think it's super useful for myself, but more so for businesses and agencies that are reporting to multiple stakeholders, multiple parties and that have a larger team. There are several reasons why I really liked using data box data boards. Uh, and one of that is obviously because it saves you a lot of time uh, from going back and forth between those different data sources that you have. But also the other thing is to pull different metrics from different data sources and see a snapshot in one single place you are not able to do that at all unless you actually go ahead and create a PowerPoint presentation or a slide for yourself and manually extract the data and plug it into that PowerPoint deck that you might have. So this really easily solves that issue for you. If you're in an agency setting and doing reporting on a regular basis for multiple clients, it makes your life so much easier. I so wish that we had a solution like this when I was working uh, in marketing agencies. It would have made my life so much easier, I tell you. For my use case, I guess, for content creators or smaller businesses, it's a great way to share with the brands that I'd like to work with so I can think of it kind of like a media kit almost uh, to share my top metrics with them so that they can see my performance so they can evaluate how we can collaborate how my audience is aligned with their audience and all of that and if I'm doing a specific reporting on a campaign that I've created with a brand I can then share that specific data board with that client and if I'm also working with clients from the consultant perspective then I can create reports for them in minutes which is amazing one final thought that I had about Databox when I was going through the public templates and I wished existed with the templates and data boards is data boards by audience types. So what I mean by that is, for example, I wish that there was a filter to find templates that were already well received and that were proven to be best practice 
to present to C-level executives, to board members, to um, the internal managers, or maybe campaign-based data boards for marketing reporting. Also, another one could be if you're an agency and if you're presenting to your clients or reporting to your clients, maybe a format that was already well received, that's already a best practice to present to your clients, or maybe if you're a consultant, uh, again, to report to your clients. And also for maybe social ads campaigns or templates for small businesses and so on and so forth. So the idea was to have templates filtered out by the audience and to be able to see data boards that already were proven to be best practices for that specific audience segment. All right, that's all from me for today. Hopefully this was helpful to understand how you can see your business data in one single place and how tools like Databox can make marketers' lives so much easier by simplifying analytics and making reporting easier and faster for us. So hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know your thoughts about Databox if you're intrigued about the platform and share with us below if there are other tools that you use similar to Databox for your business analytics. Thanks so much for watching this video. I'll see you next week. Take care guys. Bye-bye.